Welcome into another edition of the Big Ten Hockey Report. Alongside Paul Caponegri, I'm Rick Pizzo. Cappy, one of the guys on this set just a few weeks ago said the yeah. nation may be giving up on Minnesota a bit too early. <laughs> I, I I don't remember. Was that you? It could have been. It, it could have been. I, you have a better guy memory too than much I do. Credit for that, but I think you were right. And uh, and they have been. They've been spectacular, and the right guys are doing it for them. Sweeping the Badgers this past weekend, and you say, well, Wisconsin's record isn't all that good. Anytime these sure. teams play, oh, yeah. they both bring their best to each and every game. And the offense is really starting to come along. Hudson Fashing's been there all year. Eric yep. Shearhorn, the replacement for Adam Wilcox, has been really good. Michael Brodzinski, the defenseman, comes right. up with a hat trick. Cappy, they're doing all the things that we saw a couple of years ago when they made that run all the way to the national title game and lost to Union. Sure, and, and Michael Brazis, he's a good fact there. He is a guy filling in the big st- shoes of Mike Riley from last year. Those are year. big skates. Exactly, and you know, we look at him as the top star of the week, and he stepped up with a hat trick, first hat trick in Big Ten play history. And I mean, that, those are the types of things that are starting to happen for Minnesota. And, and then obviously, Eric Shearhorn is the number one key, goaltending, always the most important thing. That being said, a lot of people will look at Minnesota's schedule inside the Big Ten and wait for them to play higher-ranked nationally competition. Well, they get the opportunity this weekend. It's the North North Star College Cup along with Minnesota State, Bemidji State, and St. Cloud State. I've seen St. Cloud play a bunch of times this year, a very dangerous hockey team. This is an opportunity, though, Cappy, for Minnesota to continue to climb up the pairwise and also to gain a little bit of momentum and confidence that they can play with and beat the nation's best. And it's it's a big step, and it's huge in Minnesota State and for the fans. Right now, Minnesota against in-state rivals are 1-5 on the season, and that is not going to cut it for Gopher fans. They expect a lot from this team. And the way they're building right now, they're at the point where they should be able to to do this. And and now we're talking – many factors we're talking in-state pride you're talking national rankings for your power standings to get in the NCAA tournament and then just your overall confidence to keep driving towards a big 10 championship all those factors come into this and as we see here they're tied for 15th there's so much hockey to play but this is a key moment with St. Cloud at number two. And they open up against Bemidji. St. Cloud, Minnesota sure. State plays the second game. Winners obviously play for the championships. In a perfect world for the Gophers, you beat Bemidji and you end up playing St. Cloud yep. in the second game because that team, as you can see, ranks second right now in the pairwise. For Minnesota and Don Lucia, for a team that relies a lot on youth, most yes. notably on the back end with Shearhorn, mm-hmm. when you're going up against top-level competition. Sure. And remember, a lot of these schools in different conferences have 23- and 24-year-old <laughs> right. grown men facing sure. 18-year-old freshmen. What are the keys here, especially for the young guys in this Minnesota team? You know, the young guys, I think now you can't be – you're not young guys anymore. You are in your second half of your freshman year. You played 20-some-odd games. And I think the key, though, for, for them is, is the emergence of their older guys. And, and Justin Kloos, a lot of people early on, he had a slow start, and a lot of people talked about him being the captain and feeling the pressure of the, of the captaincy and scoring all the goals and doing everything. And I think it, it hurt him a little bit. And I think now he's relaxed, and you can see it in his game, along with Hudson Fashion. Those two are a lethal tandem, killing penalties. I think there's five or six shorthanded goals between them. And you can just see their confidence now. So I'm gonna. It's gonna be fun to see now with Clues and Fashing how well they're going to see how they're gonna go against outside Big Ten and that Minnesota other teams there because I feel like they they have some pressure on them. And I think now they're playing so well. Let's see if they can continue that against these different teams. And specifically with Hudson Fashing, it's interesting because he's always had the skill set. Sure. He's huge. He's got great hands for a big guy. Yep. Last year, I think Minnesota had so many offensive pieces, he got lost in the mix a bit. And it seems like this year, sure. Cappy, he understands that he needs to be more of a goal scorer, needs to be more productive in yep. front of the net. And we see him on more of a tear, at least from a goal scoring perspective. I, and I... Th- I, I think he's showing a little more of his skill. Last year, he was more of the big body, like you said, get in front of the net. I think he's showing a little more of his skill around that. He's still using his body. He's got to use that big frame. But you're seeing him shooting, his stick handling, and the shorthanded goals. And he had two in one game a couple weeks ago against Penn State. I think he's showing his whole game. You had that with Kloos and Bristet and Connor Riley starting to come around. I'm excited and interested to see how it goes now when you go away from Big Ten play and maybe they feel a little more of that Minnesota pressure. Yeah, and I think this builds momentum too for Minnesota a good weekend because remember, still have two games to play against Penn State, still have two games to play against Michigan games, which could also help big time in the pairwise and great point both to be played at Mariucci. For Paul Caponegri, I'm Rick Pizzo as we wrap up another edition of the Big Ten Hockey Report.